I'll lay in the order and ask Councilor Barton to lead us in the Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call the roll. Councilor Brown. Councilor Weaver. Here. Councilor Brault. Here. Councilor Watson. Here. Councilor Barton. Here. Mayor Loveless. Here. We have a quorum to do business. Uh, approval of the May 28th um, minutes. May I have a motion? We approve a minutes of the May 28th meeting. Second. S motion by Councilor Watson. Second by Councilor Broughton to approve the minutes for the May 28th council meeting. Uh, is there any discussion or any changes to be made? Hearing none, Councilor Weaver? Yes. Councilor Broughton? Yes. Councilor Watson? Yes. Councilor Barton? Yes. Uh, motion carries and the minutes are approved. I'd like to welcome our visitors here today. Uh, I'm glad to see you again. Uh, I am making one change in the uh, agenda and I'm going to go ahead and do a Sour Road update and I'll ask uh, Russell Holland with Southern Engineering to sort of give an update on the status of things on Sour Road. Mayor, Council, good afternoon. Mayor has asked that periodically we stop in and kind of give you guys an update on where things are. Uh, as everybody is aware, we obviously started back working on Sour Road in April on the drainage work along Baptist Hill Cemetery. That has been going pretty much nonstop since uh, the early part of April. There's about 15 days remaining on that drainage work at this time. Uh, the current schedule for the contract is working four days a week. They're typically taking Fridays off, but they're working four long days. Um, and if we have a weather day somewhere in there, then they're making up for that by working on Friday. If uh, pace stays the way it is, then we'll start back with the original scope of work on the first week of July. So we'll jump over and start doing curb removal, sidewalk removal, um, you, right there, right around the first week of July, as long as the weather stays, holds for us like it has been. Uh, that should put us looking at the, the previous schedule and, and uh, the pace that they're moving at now, that should put us paving, putting asphalt on the ground, late August, early September. Um, we'll do some patching, do some widening. So probably a month period there of paving on and off with the wearing surface going on in mid-September. Uh, we'll have a 28-day curing period there and then final striping will go on probably the first week of October, somewhere in there is what I'm hoping for. That will be the completion of the job. The final striping, final uh, uh, paint markings that go on the job will be the last thing that we do. So there'll be a, a curing period in there where, you know, 21, 28 days where there won't be a whole lot going on on the job, but the bulk of things should be taking place in July, August, and September. One question I have is, you know, we've been discussing crosswalks. Yes, sir. For pedestrians. Um, of course, I'm well aware that this is a, uh, an ALDOT directed job, even though we applied for the grant and we don't have any authority over the job, which is unusual. But um, have you had any discussions yet with them on our desire to have these crosswalks? I have. Um, I've made them aware and the contractor aware as well that you're looking at maybe doing some different alternatives on the crosswalks uh, in the form of something that may be more aesthetically pleasing than just a standard crosswalk. Um, I've got some direction from them and from FHWA on what we can and can't do within those crosswalks. Uh, the thing that I don't have in place right now is, is pricing on some of those alternatives, but I'm looking at getting maybe three or four different alternates to propose to you and the council. Some things that will still include a, a crosswalk that meets FHWA approval, the Federal Highway Administration approval, uh, which we are held to as part of ALDOT's process, but you know, possibly give you something that you might like the looks of a little bit better. I hope to have that in the next couple of weeks, um, okay. something I can bring back to you and present. If they were, were going to allow us to, to, to do a more decorative crosswalk, yes, sir. would we have to wait 
would we do it during that 28 days after that 28 day waiting uh, curing time when would you think that would happen no sir you'll you'll probably do it um, after the paving process is is done almost immediately uh, it it depends on what alternate we go with whether it be something that we uh, put an impression in the asphalt if we do that we'll do that while we're doing the paving process if it turns out to be uh, maybe something like brick or some kind of decorative brick band and concrete band then uh, we might do that after the fact but you you do temporary striping whenever you pave the project so as soon as they finish paving we'll put temporary striping on the ground so our crosswalks could go ahead and be done at that time they'll just come back at the very end after everything's cured and put the final thermoplastic on after everything is is uh, going through the proper curing process so it's possible depending on what alternate we choose that we might do that uh, as soon as we do the paving. Okay. Any other questions? And you'll be there tomorrow night? Yes, sir. I'll be there tomorrow night. Six o'clock. Yeah. Appreciate All it. All right. See you there. Thank you. Yeah. Next item is to consider a retail liquor license for El Rey Mexican Grill. Um, it says it's a public hearing, right? Yes. I call a public hearing to order and ask if there's anyone here that wants to speak in opposition to this uh, liquor license. Is anyone here that would want to speak uh, for this liquor license? Mayor. Did, did you all want to? Uh, no, no, we really can. Okay. Yeah. We'll put the ask, let's see if you guys have any questions, I'll be glad to. Yeah. Okay. He just said it. The <laughs> public hearing is closed. The next is a resolution to approve a retail liquor license for El Rey Mexican Grill. Resolution number 190610. Mayor, I'll promote to be approved. Resolution number 190610. Second. Motion by Councilor Watson, second by Councilor Broughton to approve resolution number 19-0610. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilor Weaver? Yes. Councilor Broughton? Yes. Councilor Watson? Yes. Councilor Barton? Yes. Motion carries and the resolution to approve the liquor license for El Rey Mexican Grill and Bar is approved. And I wish you all best of luck. <laughs> Next item is to approve the accounts payable for May 2019. Mayor, I make a motion to approve accounts payable for May 2019. Second. Motion by Councilor Broughton, second by Councilor Barton to approve the accounts payable for May 2019. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilor Weaver? Yes. Councilor Broughton? Yes. Councilor Watson. Yes. Councilor Barton. Yes. Motion carries and the accounts receivable are accounts payable are approved. Next item is to appoint a nominating committee uh, for the expired term of civil brundage on the school board. And I appoint uh, Feast Broughton and Councilor Kerry Brown. Next item is renewal of BFI Waste Services LLC agreement, resolution 19-0610-1. Motion to approve 19-0610-1. Second. Motion by Councilor Barton, second by Councilor Weaver to approve resolution number 19-0610-1. Is there any discussion? The only thing I'd like to point out that BFI will furnish a recyclable uh, bin uh, if we can locate a company willing to take um, our recyclables at the moment with the way the market is there's no one taking that but we've been continually um, working with different entities to see if we can find somebody we've had them before and uh, it's just right now we don't have them but hopefully the market will change soon um, 
If there's, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Councilor Weaver? Yes. Councilor Brault? Yes. Councilor Watson? Yes. Councilor Barton? Yes. Motion carries and the resolution to renew the BFI waste services contract is approved. The next is item is to approve a public hearing to consider a 94.01 economic development grant to Longleaf Machining LLC, resolution number 19-0610-2, and the date would be? Uh, that is, whoops, sorry, uh, July 22nd. July 22nd. Yeah, we'll make a motion to approve resolution number 19-0610-2. Second. Motion by Councilor Watson, second by Councilor Barton to approve resolution number 19-0610-2. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilor Weaver? Yes. Councilor Broughton? Yes. Councilor Watson? Yes. Councilor Barton? Yes. Motion carries and the resolution to uh, set a date for uh, public hearing um, for a 94.01 grant is approved. Next item is to set a public hearing to consider a 94.01 economic development grant agreement with Sapphire Hospitality LLC. Resolution number 19-0610-3. And that also July 22nd? Yes. May I make motion to approve resolution 19-06 one zero dash three. Second. Motion by Councillor Broughton, second by Councillor Weaver to approve resolution number 19-0610-3 uh, to hold a public hearing uh, for an economic development grant for Sapphire Hospitality LLC. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none. Wait. Did I already say that? <laughs> so. Councilor Weaver? Yes. Councilor Bar Broughton? Yes. Councilor Watson? Yes. Councilor Barton? Yes. Uh, motion carries and the public hearing is approved. The City of Bruton, with numerous sponsors, uh, sponsored a mud run this past weekend, and I want to give <coughs> due credit to Steve Layton of the city that was his project with the, the city. He was in charge of it entirely for the city. Uh, I asked Steve to come today. There's a whole long list of people that, that helped Steve and were part of it and to give the council and the, the rest of the citizens an update on it. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, when I first started to work with the city, the mayor said, I'd like to do a color run. And I said, no, you don't want to do a color run. You want to do a mud run. Because with the mud run, we got three parks. And with three parks, we got a creek. And with three parks, we got plenty of woods. And so that's what we decided to do. And I also said at that time, we weren't ready to do one yet. Uh, we were ready to do one after about a year of study when we first got with uh, Coach Rob Atkinson. And he was the uh, cross country coach at T.R. Miller. And at the same time we were getting ready to do this run, we had other things happening in the nation. We had people watching American Ninja and Spartan races and uh, cross country extreme events. So we got involved with Coach Atkinson and said, you wanna see about doing one of these? He said, I would love to do it. So the first year that we did this, um, we used his expertise in setting up uh, state size trap meets. And so he had that staff, he had those connections for doing something like this and we utilize all of those uh, expertise uh, that he had. Um, the first year we had about 300 runners. We probably had 150 spectators that came and saw the mud run that we had last year. And people were just raving about the fact that Bruton has a uh, mud run that involves a creek and that creek became part of the obstacle. And we put them in woods that, you know, it's, most of these things are done in a stadium. And so we were able to do, do that in our parks instead of putting it in a man-made stadium. 
Uh, this year we had 400 runners. We had around 400 spectators. Half of those numbers came from out of town, including out of state. Uh, we had runners from Florida, Mississippi, and Georgia, uh, besides the locals that we had here from Bruton. My original goal was to utilize the three different downtown parks and get the public into parks that they probably hadn't seen in a long time. There are a lot of people that hadn't been in O'Bannon in a long time until we put the arena in there and then we uh, did this uh, mud run. We were able to create an event that could grow and evolve over uh, a period of years. This year we added, uh, expanded the kids run and Rob also added <coughs> corporate teams and those were the big attractions because you had teams of four people at a time competing instead of just an individual. When you bring four people, then all of their friends and family come along as well. The mayor and the city council provided your full support of this event and it's become a huge success. Uh, every department of the city contributed to this event. Uh, we didn't hear a no from any department. We had public works, that's Craig's teams that were helping to build all the different obstacles. We had Scott's team, Scott Pate with his parks and rec team. They had three parks that they had to keep up and keep clean and, and groom for all these people to come into. The police department, I called them the day of and said, hey, we may have a bunch of people showing up here and they said, we got it covered. We already know what you're doing, we got it covered. Fire department provided the water for the obstacles. They fill those tanks up. They also cooked for that day. And then uh, we had Bruton Utilities. They were supplying some of the pipes and things that we were using for obstacles as well. The Chamber of Commerce backed the event with businesses and sponsors. And then they even had some of their volunteers as timekeepers. So Coach Rob Atkinson, his wife Lisa, and Molly and Will Ruzik, and all of their team, along with Connie Baggett, uh, they put this thing together logistically so it just ran like a clock. Now we're going to do some new things next year. Rob wants to expand it even bigger, but we don't want to grow too fast because um, we went from 300 to 400. I mean, we want to do this thing exponentially so we're able to, to handle what's going to be going on in O'Bannon Park. So we have 400 runners, no injuries. There's hundreds of photos being shared right now across social media. And that's kind of <coughs> how I judge the, the success of something is the buzz that happens and how long it lasts after. So if you go to um, bccrun.com and look at all of the photos that are being posted right now of the people, their families, their kids, uh, of all the different obstacles, I think you'll see that it was a major success. And I want to thank y'all again for uh, having uh, the foresight to support this vision and see something that's going to be a success for Bruton. I hope for not only last year and this year, but years to come. Thank you again for your support on that vision. Are there any questions about a mud run that I can answer for you? <laughs> thank you, Steve. Good Great job. job. Steve. Means your